Good morning, Heaven Bound family, and anyone may be listening. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word, and um, uh, been uh, studying since about two this morning. And um, uh, I mentioned, um, I believe it was Monday morning, I talked about the fact of why I believe in a rapture. Uh, this morning, I'd like to share with you why I believe in a millennium. And really, it's unfortunate that that word millennium ever came into existence. Uh, uh, the reason it does is because a millennium in Greek is a thousand. And so, uh, actually, you know, a better word would be a kingdom, because that's what the scripture is talking about when it talks about this period of time. There's no way I can share with you all that the Bible has to say about it uh, uh, in one or possibly even two days. But what I'd like to do is just give you the um, basics of it. That way, if you want to study it out, you can. Uh, it may not be of any interest to you. But if it is, um, let me help you with it. Um, first of all, let's go to the um, most direct uh, scripture of it. It is found in Revelation chapter 20. Six times here in um, uh, six verses, uh, seven verses, uh, we're going to see that word thousand. Now, there's some who wants to spiritualize everything, and they want to say, uh, just like the Bible says that a, a day with the Lord is, is a thousand years. Uh, uh, but here in Revelations, we have a period of time when it begins, when it ends. What's going to happen before it? what will happen after it, what happens during it. And uh, notice, um, if, we, if we go back to chapter 19, the last uh, verses 20 and 21, the Antichrist is destroyed. The false prophet, uh, both of them are cast into the lake of fire. The tribulation period comes to an end. Verse chapter 20 begins in verse 1. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the bottom of his pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And notice, bounds him a thousand years. Verse 3. And cast him into the bottom of his pit and shuts him up and sets a seal upon him. They should deceive the nations no more till a period of time, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. There's a beginning, there's an end. It begins at the end of the tribulation period, and uh, it will end when Christ turns the kingdom over to uh, the Father in um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Notice in verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they set up on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his marks upon their foreheads, are in their hands, and they lived and they reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years was finished. In other words, these tribulation saints, those who gave their life for the Lord during the tribulation period by resisting the Antichrist, are now going to be raised up and they're going to uh, live during this thousand year tribulation period. And more than live, they're going to reign with Christ. A thousand years. Now, hold on to the fact there that Christ is going to reign, uh, and uh, this this is important. This is what the thousand years is all about. It's about fulfilling a promise that God made to David way back in Second Samuel, chapter seven, when Nathan the prophet comes to David and um, uh, tells David all that the Lord has said. Uh, the setting of it is David has defeated his enemies, he's at rest, and he wants to build God a house. Instead, God is going to say, to, and by the way, Nathan sanctions it, but then God comes to Nathan and says, uh, uh, erase that, uh, Nathan. Uh, uh, and um, he says, uh, instead of David building me a house, 
I'm going to build David a house. And in First Samuel, or in Second Samuel, chapter seven, uh, notice it really you need to begin reading about verse eight. It says, "Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts: I took thee from the sheepfold and and followed the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. Moreover, drop down to ten. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them." that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before times. Notice there's a time coming. It hasn't come yet. Israel is still being afflicted. As a matter of fact, Zionist, the, the Zionist movement uh, is uh, uh, growing every day, even here in America. Uh, but come on down to verse uh, 16. Notice he says, And thy house, this is God speaking to David through Nathan the prophet, and thine house and thy kingdom, hold on to that word kingdom, you'll find it's going to be mentioned often, thy kingdom and uh, shall be established forever before thee, thy throne shall be established forever. Jump over to verse 24. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever, and thy Lord are become their God. That's David praying and thanking God for the promise he's going to have a house. Now back to Revelations. Uh, so here in Second Samuel, we have the beginning of the promise of a kingdom. We'll read more of it uh, later. Um, but uh, here in uh, verse uh, uh, 5, uh, he said, But the rest of the day it lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Notice as I said, there is a beginning. It begins at the end of the tribulation period. There is an ending. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when Jesus has put all enemies under his feet, then he's going to turn the kingdom back over to the Father. And um, his kingdom will not be destroyed. He is going to just, it's going to just fade right into eternity. At the end of the thousand years, there's going to be, as you read here in Revelation chapter 20, there's going to be a final judgment. It's called the Great White Throne Judgment when all the wicked, all from Adam down, who have rejected Christ, is going to be cast into the lake of fire. And when that happens, this earth is going to be destroyed. And a new heaven and a new earth is going to come into existence. And uh, it will be uh, an eternal existence. Uh, and uh, so let me read on here. Uh, verse 5, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now notice he talks about a first resurrection. That is the resurrection of all the saints of God, including the tribulation saints. A lot of people believe there's just going to be one judgment or one resurrection. Not so. Uh, Christ is going to raise first. Uh, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul will spend 57 verses there talking about the resurrection. He said Christ is going to rise first. And then every man after his own order. Uh, if we go back to Matthew chapter 27 verse 52, the Old Testament saints rose after Christ's resurrection. We find them in Revelation chapter four on the throne around the on thrones around the throne of God. Half of the twenty four elders are sitting on the throne. Half of them will be uh, Israelites. Half of them will be the church. Uh, twenty four divided by two, you have twelve, and uh, they are represented in Revelation chapter twenty one by the fact that the uh, 12 gates to the city will have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel on it and the foundation of the city 
will be 12 foundations and the names on the foundations will be the names of the 12 apostles. So um, uh, they are the 24 elders sitting around the throne in Revelation chapter 4. Now then, uh, back to Revelation chapter 20. And when the thousand years are expired, notice that thousand years had a beginning as an ending. It's going to come to a close. And when a thousand years expires, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them to gather to battle, the number of whom is as the sands of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and they can pass the camp of the saints about. And the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are. Notice the beast and the false prophet cast into the lake of fire a thousand years earlier in chapter 19, verse 20 and 21 of Revelation. Now then Satan, a thousand years later, is cast into the same lake of fire. In verse 11 begins the great white throne judgment. I saw a great white throne judgment with him that sat on it, and, and so forth. And so uh, the order of things are Christ rose back around 33 A.D. Uh, the Old Testament saints rose right after Christ rose and went into the holy city. Um, and then... Uh, the church will rise in First Thessalonians chapter 4 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The church is going to rise. Jesus is going to fulfill his promise to the church made in John 14, 1, 2, and 3 when he says, I'll go away to prepare a place for you, but if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am. There you may be also. Where is he? Well, we find if we read in the book of Ezekiel, that he sets up on a throne in Israel, in the center of Israel, and the twelve tribes are reestablished, and um, the twelve apostles will reign over them, according to Matthew chapter 19. Now then, I want you to notice back to Revelation 20. We have the term a thousand years mentioned six times here, once in verse 2, once in verse 3, once in verse 4, uh, once in verse 5, once in verse 6, once in verse 7, six times, and it is given as a definite period of time, a beginning, which something will happen, Satan will be bound, and a thousand years begins, an ending, when a thousand years is up, the old, uh, all those who are, who have lived from Adam to present time, uh, to the present, to that present time, will be judged and cast into the lake of fire. And uh, the tribulation saints, along with the church, along with a third of the Jews, which will enter into the millennium or into the kingdom, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. And then uh, the um, others that notice in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 6, uh, 16, it says, And all of those who are left... That is, those who wasn't killed of the nations that come up against Israel. Seeing what has happened, they repent, they accept Christ, they enter into the millennium in their natural bodies. They and the children of Israel in their natural bodies will bear multiple, multiple thousands of children over that thousand year period. And it's they that uh, will be judged there at the end um, of the thousand years there and will be found guilty and will stand before God at the white throne judgment to be cast in the lake of fire. Now then, if we go back to the church again, the church is uh, not judged for whether or not they will go to heaven or to hell. They're judged according to First and Second Corinthians chapter five, ten, and eleven. They are judged uh, according to First Corinthians chapter three, thirteen through fifteen, where they each one will stand before Christ to be judged, not to see if they go to heaven or hell, 
but to see if they have uh, won a reward. And, um, uh, and those who have will be rewarded. And um, uh, then we will reign with Christ during the thousand years. Now then, that is the beginning and that is the end of the millennium. I need to stop here. It's 15 minutes into this year. Uh, if you want to uh, hear the rest of it, uh, we will go to the book of Daniel, to the book of Zephaniah, to the book of Zechariah, and to the book of Isaiah. Uh, four books there that uh, between written between 760 BC and uh, basically uh, 500. Uh, uh, B.C., uh, and then also in Revelations uh, uh, and uh, 1 Thessalonians and uh, uh, 1 Corinthians and so forth. We will try to look at that tomorrow. We will go back and we will see how the kingdom, let's call it kingdom instead of millennium, how the kingdom is promised, how it will be set up when it will uh, be in existence. We'll talk about that tomorrow and uh, invite you to read the second chapter of Daniel along with the seventh chapter of Daniel. Invite you to read the covenant in Second Samuel uh, there in chapter 7 uh, and beginning in verse, uh, around verse 15, I believe it is 16. I um, invite you to read Zephaniah chapter 3, and then invite you to read Isaiah, the last six chapters of the book of Isaiah, uh, and um, you'll see that there's going to be a kingdom set up. Christ is going to reign over it. You'll see the time of that kingdom. It will be when Christ comes back and bringing the saints with him. Zechariah chapter 13, I believe it is 14. I'll share it with you tomorrow. But we'll look at this tomorrow, and uh, hopefully um, it will give you food for thought. And fortunately, whether you believe in a thousand-year reign or not, has nothing to do with salvation. You can be a Christian believing there will be a thousand-year reign, or you can, and you can be a Christian not believing it. Um, but um, I think it's important that you study it out and that you believe it. It will give you joy and a sense of victory what Jesus is going to do when he comes back again. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word. By the way, it's Thursday. It's the first day of July. Uh, and welcome to the second half of 2021. Go for it today. Be blessed. Uh, I bless someone along the way, and uh, God will bless you for it. Have a blessed and wonderful day.